Hey guys, Raj here. I hope you guys are well. Today, this video is the answers section of my Q&A. So about a week or maybe a little bit longer than that, I put out a questions video and I got a bunch of questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to answer all of them in what will probably be a bit of a long video. So get comfortable. This is going to be uh, a bit of a long one. So yeah, first question came in actually before I even put out the Q&A video uh, from Ed from the YouTube channel Lucid Sense. And he says, if you could collaborate with any perfumer on a bespoke fragrance for yourself, who would you work with and why? So I think there's a lot of bespoke, um, a lot of uh, brands offering bespoke perfumes. You can sit with the perfumer, go through all of your, your thoughts and um, you know, all the different variations and tell them what you like. And it's very interesting. It can be very expensive though. But if I could do it, I would probably do it with Roger Dove. Um, I think his work is, is really good, very, very high quality ingredients, very nicely multi-layered fragrances. They work really well on my skin and I think we could create something really special. So yeah, that would probably be my, um, my choice. He also goes on to say, what are your, uh, basically what are your pet peeves in the YouTube fragrance community? Well, uh, to be honest, I don't really have that many. Like I don't get annoyed that much by things that go on in, in YouTube uh, fragrance wise. Um, there is going to be, you know, negativity wherever you go in life, and I, you know, try to try to stay away from that. Um, also, one thing which is a bit of a not that much of a anno annoying thing to me, but unboxing videos. Like, what I don't get is when people do unboxing videos, and like one minute is spent just opening the box and opening the packaging. I just think, open it before and then take out the fragrance. I mean, if it's a quick job, like a 10 second job, then fine, but sometimes they go on a little bit too long. So yeah, that's the answer to that question. Next up, from Zatara Wood. Got a couple of questions in here. Uh, do you have a girlfriend or are you married? Um, at the moment, I'm actually single. So yeah, ladies, give me a call. No, no, that's probably why I'm single. I do stupid things like that but yeah no I am single but he also says what would you do if you found the above or a future girlfriend wife stealing your fragrances whoa that's a that's a serious thing I don't mind sharing but stealing I think what I would do is I would fill up like the bottle that she used to steal the most and fill it up with like secretions magnifique or something like that and I would put uh, a CCTV camera and just watch her uh, take it you know, look around, see if I'm there, spray it on, and then probably faint from this horrific smell. So I'll probably do that. And he also says, what if you found that person selling them on, uh, selling decants on eBay for cold hard cash? I would call the police and make sure she gets locked up for life, I think. Okay, second question. Um, and there's a few questions in here relating to cigars, because some of you guys know that's what I'm into. He says, how do you reconcile smoking cigars with the love of fragrances? Does it cause uh, a cognitive dissonance when wearing a nice fragrance and then you light up a smelly cigar? I see what you're saying there. You know, you want to smell good, but then all of a sudden you've got this cigar smell surrounding you. Honestly, it doesn't really bother me. Often when I smoke a cigar, it's towards like the end of a day or, or end of something. So after work on a Friday night, you know, my fragrance is pretty much worn off. Um, for example, Christmas Day, you know, you've had your great meal, you just sit down in the evening with a nice drink and the fragrance is, you know, coming towards the end of its life. So I don't mind. At the end of the day, you know, um, it's quite hard to it's quite hard to sort of get away from the smell of smoke on your skin. There are things you can do, but I try not to worry about it. Um, he says, what do you do when you're not smelling fragrances? And just by the way, there are a few questions that overlap in here. So, you know, I, I probably will answer a few questions before I get to get to yours. Um, so what do you do when you're not smelling fragrances? <clears throat> One thing that I recently got, not got into, but have tried to be a bit more consistent is with my fitness. Um, I have made a commitment to work out three times a week this year. And it's, yeah, so far going quite well. I've always been into like fitness, but never really taken it too seriously and never been good with the consistency. But I've got a couple of kettlebells. I've got a couple of dumbbells. Um, I like to do like body weight exercises. I've been working on different variations of push-ups and um, doing a lot of sets, not taking too much rest. Uh, I like running when the weather is warm. I'm a bit of a wimp. I don't like to run in the cold weather. Probably need to man up, but it's just too cold. <laughs> I don't want to run out in the cold. It, 
So when the weather warms up, I like to go for a run. Uh, I love swimming. Uh, if Whenever there's a pool, I will be in it, guaranteed. Love swimming. I've been swimming since I was younger, so really enjoy it. Even when I'm on like a relaxing holiday, I like to swim. Um, I like to read as well. I, I don't read as in many in terms of books. I don't read as much as I'd like to. I think when I was studying for my accountancy exams, I had my head in a book all the time, and I just the reading a book was like the last thing I wanted to do. But I like to subscribe to magazines. Um, subscriber to Esquire magazine, uh, Men's Health, uh, The Economist, and also in London, there's free newspapers handed out every day and, and magazines as well. So yeah, I always like to read. Uh, I love to explore areas like new cities, new countries, and go out and try new food. I love food. So yeah, also, you know, fragrances and cigars is also an interest of mine. Uh, he also says, do you have any other interest in luxury things such as gourmet food and wine, uh, bespoke ta tailoring or cars or anything like that? Well, I will um, say that fragrances and collecting you know cigars especially if you're into collecting like vintage cigars which is something that i've got into recently is very much a luxury in itself um and also i will he says gourmet food well now and again it's good to go out and try new restaurants michelin starred restaurants if it's a special occasion i think some of the food that that some of these chefs can create is incredible and it is pricey but now and again you know i think it's cool to do that um, I think watches is something I would get into over time. It's a little bit out of my um, price range at the moment, but I, I've got, I keep my eye on certain things. Um, I've subscribed to a few channels, like watch-related channels. So I quite like uh, I quite like Breguet. So one day I would love to own a Breguet watch. We'll see what happens in the future. Okay, next up, question from Alex Araza. Uh, sorry if I'm saying these names wrong. Is it Araza, Araza, I'm not sure. How many fragrances do you own? Um, and how do you keep the frag addiction in the bottle, so to speak? So he says, basically, I break up my frags by month rather than by season. That way I kind of have a mini haul each month, then a significant hiatus before I enjoy them again. Well, in my peak, I had like 120 fragrances. And even then, I never really considered myself a collector. I just had a large collection. Now I think I have around 26, 27 bottles. Um, that collection is actually behind me now so I've got about that many there's a few in there which I would like to get rid of and <clears throat> when I did my collection video in when was this like December 2014 I said that I'd like to keep my fragrances around 20 or the low 20s so I've gone up over that a little bit which I it's not a big deal but I would like to reduce the collection just a little bit um, and how do I sort of keep this thing this addiction in check I think it's very important in life generally to have some discipline and it's just difficult at times because I always think if you like something a lot, indulge, you know, go for it, but within your means. I think one of the best ways of keeping things in, in sort of order and not let things go out of two hand is have investments in other part of your life. So this could be in the form of, you know, savings account or if you invest in shares or property. And if you're putting away a certain amount, which I do, it forces me, you know, I'm in a position where I don't have that much money to spend on fragrances like maybe I did used to spend in the past. So that's a great way of doing things. Okay, question from uh, a YouTube reviewer, Cascade Sense. Uh, he says, off the top of your head, ideally, what is your fragrance starting lineup for early 2016? And it gives me the, uh, the categories. So signature scent and work scent. Well, for signature scent and work scent, I actually don't really have like a signature scent. But I do have fragrances that I wear a lot, but I rotate as well. So for signature and work scent in the early part of 2016, so winter, Roger Parfum, Enigma, Pour Homme, I wear that a lot. I've recently repurchased Aqua de Parma's Colonian Tensor, so I wear those two fragrances a lot. So that could be like a work and signature scent kind of together. Uh, Night Out, Night Out, Pure Malt works great. Uh, Tom Ford's Oud Wood works really, really well. And um, Parfum de Mali's Herod actually works great on a night out. I've worn that a few times actually recently to bars when I went out. Close quarters fragrances, anything that's really sweet to be honest. You know, fragrances like Pure Malts, like Spiritus, Double Vanille, Vanille. Um, these work very, very well. Aventus also is works really well in my experience anyway. Um, a daring scent. Well, my daring and my upper class scent, I'm going to combine them actually. And it is again from the house of Roger Parfum, and that is Diaghilev. That is, um, for me, uh, so complex. 
um, very very high quality quite bold as well so I do like to wear that you know weddings or big family get-togethers so yeah all right uh, fragrance from uh, top line fragrances so this is Carl and uh, he's a UK reviewer he says do you live alone or with someone else maybe a flatmate or a girlfriend wife yeah I do live alone actually so this is the my one bedroom flat that I live in um, I moved in here end of May and I used to live with my parents for you know all up until up until that point but yeah I live alone and to be honest I don't think I would want to share my property with anyone unless it is like um, you know a long-term girlfriend or a wife <laughs> Not that I have like a problem living with other people, but I feel like I've done that in university, and now you know I I, I like I like sort of being solo kind of thing. Um, how and where do you keep your fragrances? Well, when I was living with my parents, I kept them in like a cupboard, and it had um, shelves. And for me, that was the most ideal way. It was away from light, away from dark. Everything was visible to me they were easy to reach for now wh when i moved in here i had these fragrances that you see behind me in drawers in boxes in another cupboard just down there and it wasn't good so now i've taken them all out they are not exposed to light um directly but i do actually keep the one of the curtains shut during the day or drawn during the day so yeah being a cigar lover like myself and um yeah he's he definitely is a cigar lover himself. He has a great channel. Uh, do you like tobacco in fragrances? He says, I do not, strange as it seems. I do like tobacco in fragrances, but it has to be done in a particular way. And the way for me to appreciate tobacco in fragrances is it has to be uh, a kind of sweet, fruity, almost like a pipe tobacco mixed in with other sweeter notes like a honey or like a caramel or like booze like cognac, whiskey that combined makes an amazing accord. Tobacco, you know, when it's too dry in fragrances or when it dominates, not really my thing. It's not really something that I just want to smell of for a long amount of time anyway. Question from James Baird. It appears that you work in mid-management in England. I wonder with the hobby, have you noticed an economic impact? So he says, i.e., Fragrance houses going broke or merging or other noticed changes, good or bad? I think, yeah, you know, the fragrances from, if you're looking at it from a business point of view, is very interesting. And in terms of, you know, the way that the world is going at the moment, um, it's economic downturns, a lot of countries not growing, share markets plunging, currencies being devalued around the world. Um, I think actually the opposite is happening in the fragrance world. I think that's actually booming and whenever I go out in London or any big cities or you know play any any other big city there's always a huge fragrance department there in it in the department stores and if you take London for example on Oxford Street there's a big department store called John Lewis and they completely re revamped their fragrance department um, Harrods also have dedicated the sixth floor just to boutique style fragrances, uh, fragrance houses, shops almost. And they have the perfumery hall down on the ground floor. And there's so many brands and, and websites popping up all over the place. Uh, and fragrances are being churned out, whether it be in the mainstream market or in the niche side. So it's big business. And actually, I think it's growing. And I think it's because fragrance is seen to a lot of people as a very affordable luxury. You know, um, it's something that's going to last probably a long amount of time and it's not going to cost you like hundreds and thousands of pounds, really. So, yeah, uh, a question from Chad. So this is a, another fragrance review, a gentleman's journey. He says, when are you coming to Canada and will you ever want to work with me in person? So, I'd, yeah, I would love to uh, do a collab. I think you're coming to London, so definitely we'll meet up. I don't know when I'm going to go to Canada. I do have relatives in Ottawa, but um like as much as I want to visit Canada there are so many other countries that are probably higher up on my list so I don't know when it would happen but you know I definitely would like to uh, do it one day uh, Chad asks you know being a Brit are you sarcastic well yeah definitely you probably won't see it on camera um, but when I'm especially when I'm with my friends or like university friends especially yeah really really sarcastic definitely definitely um, he says it favorite designer house for fashion um, you know, like designer, um, uh, so d uh, 
fashion in terms of like the high-end designer things is not something that I really go for but there are some brands like Ralph Lauren I love Ralph Lauren their jumpers are amazing great quality clothes and you can get them from their outlet stores around the UK for a good discount I think Lacoste make great polo shirts very very high quality they last a long time great fit one brand that I don't own anything from them but I would like to is Xenia I think their tailoring is amazing fine details um, great sort of quality and build craftsmanship is is amazing so yeah um, that's probably a couple of couple of brands there like, off the top of my head okay so next question from rise frags 34 so Ryan what was your signature scent before you really got into fragrances or have you always been into it and had several bottles um, no I never have had a huge collection it started quite slow and I think my signature scent before I really got into it was in my university years I used to wear a lot of Ralph Lauren polo blue and um, I went through a few bottles of that I loved it I also liked Paul Smith extreme and so those were the two fragrances I alternated by when I used to go like to lectures or nights out yeah those two fragrances I also had one fragrance and I can't remember what it was called but it was from the body shop and I, I, can't, I really can't remember what it was but yeah I had those were the three main fragrances I rotated uh, in my university years okay so next up um, question from another reviewer Rio Cappuccino uh, who inspired you to start reviewing well I remember when I was I was into fragrances but I wasn't watching YouTube videos and then one day I was looking for I don't know I'm pretty sure it was I was looking for Isemiyaki Porom so I went online typed it into Google um, expecting to like click on a, a place to buy it but then I saw a little video clip from Mark Robes08 so one of the biggest uh, probably the biggest fragrance reviewer out there and uh, I, I saw this video and I thought, okay, what's this guy doing? He's uh, talking about a fragrance, he's reviewing it. This video is going on for like 10, 15 minutes. What's going on here? Then I saw a few other videos in the um, down the side, clicked on them, started watching, and I thought, okay, I think this is a little bit strange, people talking this passionately and this much detail about fragrances. But um, I got into it that way, so probably probably Mark. And I watched a lot of his videos, actually. A lot of, a lot of time I spent watching his videos. And still do. Fragrance from, uh, sorry, a question from Fgar NY. Do you carry a decant of a fragrance with you to reapply? Um, carrying decants, well, sometimes I do carry decants, not really to reapply a fragrance, but to give me something new. So if I'm, say, going to work and I've got a fragrance on and I know that I'm going out in the evening, I will carry maybe sometimes a bottle, actually, uh, or a little decant or a sample with me in my bag spray it on just before I go and that's perfect um, although sometimes I don't always do that sometimes if I'm going out and I know there's a department store or a shop nearby that stocks fragrances I'll go in have a, have a little sniff try on something and that's the way I go uh, and he also says how do you test a fragrance to decide if it's good in terms of smell and performance quite straightforward you know and this comes with experience sampling just sample 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 what I try to do is I ideally anyway not always but ideally go into a store, try a fragrance, maybe try 10, 15 fragrances, and let's say the five that jumped out to you, buy a sample or ask for a sample, try try that sample out, wear it, maybe get a decant if you're unsure, something larger. And just that's for me is the best way of getting the best fragrance for you. Another question from a, a reviewer, Eugene from the channel You Smelled Good. He says, hey Raj, fragrance, uh, the, what's the fragrance you were wearing for your first ever kiss? You know what, I have no idea, but I was. it was probably during like, I don't know, like a game of spin the bottle when I was much younger. And when I was really, really young, much younger, for some reason, I don't know why, but I used to wear Kuros from YSL. And how that fragrance managed to get into my collection, I have no idea. But I did actually used to wear Kuros and... Um, Maybe that was a sign of things to come because, wow, that's a pretty interesting fragrance for like a young young guy. He also says, any fragrances in your wardrobe that you dislike? Um, no, <laughs> it's a simple answer. If I don't like it, it's gone. I sell it. Simple as that. And in your opinion, what is the greatest era of perfumery? 
That's a tough question because, you know, you only... You can smell vintage fragrances and maybe they have been kept in a good condition, but sometimes the top notes go off. You can smell a fragrance that was created in like the 1930s and you can smell it now, but it will be not the same. It would have been reformulated. So I can't really say like, you know, oh, the, the 1930s um, when Chanel made, you know, Quid de Russie or whenever that happened, that was the best era because I never actually have smelt that version when it came out at the time. But thinking about it, um, I think the best era of perfumery is now. I think there's so many innovative brands out there, uh, maybe too many brands actually, but a lot of great stuff, a lot of aroma chemicals being produced, um, a lot of synthetics being produced to create um, crazy accords or accords that are now been banned, uh, sorry, like, you know, to replicate the uh, notes that you can't use anymore. And yeah, I think there's some amazing stuff being produced nowadays. So I would say, I would say now. And your favorite perfumer. My favorite perfumer is probably Bertrand Duchafour. He has done a lot of work for L'Artisan, for Penhaligans. Um, he's done a recent fra a fragrance for Naomi Goodsir, which I really like, or Du Soray. Um, yeah, he's done some work for, I think, Amouage and also for um, Aqua de Palma. And he is very interesting. He does very different stuff especially when given the chance, mainly at L'Artisan. Um, they have this complexity and very oddness to them, but very, very wearable, and they're very unique. It, he has a certain style. I can't quite put my finger on how to describe it. But yeah, Bertrand Duchafour. Question from Efrain Flores. What are the fragrances that remind you of your parents? Well, one fragrance that immediately comes to mind is a fragrance that I associate with my mum. So when I was younger, and this would have been around, I don't know, like 10, 11, 12, something like that, my mum used to come in, I mean, that's not that young, I suppose, but it, it's young. And my mum used to come into my room um, just before she went to work to say goodbye to me and uh, probably like make sure I was awake and like going to school. And I remember this scent, it was really the first time I, I sort of really picked up on, wow, this is a very interesting scent on somebody. But I never really knew what it was until I grew up a little bit more and actually saw the bottle on her like dressing um, counter or thing. And it was from Frederick Marle. And this fragrance was Lise Mediterranee, which I found out that my, my dad actually bought it for her. So that's crazy because my mum, or maybe my dad, you could say also, was into like fragrances at that level before I even knew really what fragrances were all about. And Frederick Marle, that's pretty cool. Uh, in terms of fragrance that reminds me of my dad, well, I don't really remember too many scents from when I was very, very young. He's told me that he used to wear um, fragrances from Dunhill, uh, Tabac, and uh, nowadays, now that I've got into fragrances, I've introduced him to some, some stuff, given him some bottles. He loves Creed, he liked Green Irish Tweed. Bois de Portugal, um, Royal Water. He's also a big fan, this is probably his signature scent, is Floris Elite. He also has a bottle of Clive Christian X for Men, which, <laughs> it was a funny story, we were out in London in Fortnum and Mason, and I said, let's just go to the fragrance department, it's really good. And he tried X for Men, I think he had a little sample before, and he just bought it on the spot, and he was just like, yeah, okay, I'll get a bottle. And I was like, what? what? Don't you want to test it a little bit more? It's, you know, it's not exactly a cheap fragrance. But yeah, those are the types of fragrances um, um, you know, that remind me of my parents. Question here from another reviewer, Delicious Delights. She says, Hi Raj, what are your favourite fragrances for women, both niche and designer? Well, I'll, I just mentioned my mum, so I'll go back to a couple of other fragrances that she has in her collection. And in her collection, she likes, um, she currently has... Um, Samageste La Rose from Serge Luton. She wears Fleur d'Oranger, which I will mention later on in, in another question, actually. Um, actually, no. No, sorry, I was supposed to mention this in your question. This is one of the best niche fragrances I've smelled on a woman. Um, it's very, very classy, quite a heady floral, orange blossom, jasmine. Um, it suits like a smart lady, somebody who's got a bit of spark about them, you know, an intelligent person. Um, and that's my mum, so yeah, it suits her. She also has Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. Um, she has Elisab Le Parfum, which is great. 
Uh, what else does she have? Um, she has Castile from Penhaligons, which actually used to be my bottle, but she really likes Orange Blossom Neroli based scents. So yeah, uh, what do you love, uh, that's her next question, is what do you love and hate most about this hobby? I mean, in terms of love, I love fragrances, I'm passionate about them, I love trying new things and finding that fragrance, like, you might try 10 samples, and I suppose this is something I dislike as well. There are so many fragrances out there, almost too many, that you go through and you're disappointed and disappointed, and then you come onto another sample and you're like, oh my god, I need this fragrance. Um, so I love that, discovering new brands and just going out and spending time in fragrance department stores, little boutique shops. I love that. Things that I hate or dislike, high prices for no reason, um, sub uh, style over substance, a lot of brands who want to be positioned within the niche sector. So they create amazing packaging and they only exclusively sell in Harrods, for example and they are priced at a level that only certain type of people who can afford it or want to spend that much but then the juice inside doesn't match up and I think there's a huge mismatch sometimes between some of these niche brands so what made you decide to become a reviewer well you know as I said you know I started watching videos from Mark and then I watched videos from like Al on Street Sense and Cody, Drag Doc, and I started watching them and trying out some of their recommendations and I thought to myself well I was into fragrances now I'm even more into it you know I reckon I could just do the same thing and YouTube for me is like a big pot of information people put information into it people take it out so this is like just my contribution and you know if somebody else looks at my reviews or other reviews and thinks hey I can do this as well and they start a channel and then I watch them and I gain information out of that well it's like a two-way thing so yeah and she also asked other hobbies while well, I've mentioned that already. So, yeah. Uh, question here from uh, Notes Punch, fragrance reviewer. He says, if you date, if you're, or like, if you're on a date with a supermodel uh, that you really like and you want to impress her on the first date, which fragrance would you pick? Very, very easy choice, actually. And I go for something that is very, almost very obvious and just very easy to wear. And it just gets, it, it's guaranteed to get compliments. From the house of creed it is creed aventus i've had a couple of bottles i don't have one at the moment i would like to get a decant actually i think that's the best way for me creed aventus is very classy very well made very expensive actually as well but it just works so if you're looking for compliments go with creed aventus what's the fragrance that works best with your skin chemistry i'm actually going to name a brand um galant somehow i don't know why but maybe it's just the quality of the ingredients or is it my skin but they work so well on my skin it's just perfect yeah galant fragrances amazing what's your most complimented fragrance as of right now well when i said when you when you say like as of right now in my mind i'm thinking like of all time instead of you know february 2016 um, one of my most f complimented fragrances is Creed Aventus when I had a couple of bottles, um, Tobacco Vanille and uh, Diorum Intense. These are three, like, they will always get some attention and it's always positive. He also says, uh, what's your favourite cigar brand as of right now? So I think um, you're a cigar smoker as well, so yeah. What is your favourite cigar brand as of right now? Well, I really like, um, in fact, one. I got two Humidors. And one of them is full of just one brand, and that brand is Partagas. It's a Cuban brand, and oh, they're amazing. Really, really, I've got into it, actually. Siri D4 is amazing. I was recently in India, and they have an amazing walk-in humidor in the international airport there. And I bought, up a, uh, I bought a 2013 box of Partagas Shorts, a box of 25. Very, very small to cars, but very complex. Great flavor. Great aroma as well, it took me by surprise. Um, yeah, in terms of other brands, um, I love, uh, one thing, I've, one brand I really, really do appreciate is, pa is uh, Padron, a uh, Nicaraguan brand, excellent cigars. Again, on the pricier side, but you really do get what you're paying for. I love Hoya de Monterey. I've got a few uh, vintage cigars from 2004. Um, the Petit Robusto and Epicure Number no. 2, with at least 10 years of age on them. Uh, 12 years of age now 
amazing smoke very very complex for what you get they age so well so yeah those those brands and he says when you're going to a cigar lounge to have a cigar and a drink which fragrance would you be wearing um well if i was going like on the day specifically to a lounge probably something like parfum de mali's herod or tobacco vanille a very obvious choice but it does work well because they're quite powerful as well so afterwards they do you still smell them but generally fragrances i don't really think about fragrances when i'm smoking a cigar. okay next up question from dickensian evening who also happens to be my aunt <laughs> or maybe is it my cousin because i think they share the both same accounts and um you could have asked me this question last week when we met but okay i'll answer your questions now what is your favorite fragrance <clears throat> I think my for for a long <clears throat> excuse me for a long period of time my favorite fragrance was um, Clive Christian's Sea for Men and I still love it but I think my favorite fragrance as of now is probably Dior Homme Intense um, that is for me just an amazing fragrance. Uh, what is your favorite? Uh, what is your favorite song? My favorite song um, probably would come from somebody like DJ Shadow. I'm a big fan of DJ Shadow. I've seen him live in London. His first album, Introducing, had two tracks, which are probably my favourites of all time. Um, Building Steam with a Grain of Salt and Midnight in a Perfect World. He's a DJ who samples and all of his tr all of his music is made up of little samples. He's amazing. He's a genius for me. Um, I also quite like, uh, I quite like Massive Attack and they've got a song called um, Angel or... Um, yeah, Angel, Teardrop also, those are ones that come to mind. Uh, what's your favorite food? Oh, I love, I love food. I'm like a massive foodie. I really, really do like food. Thai food is great. Indian food is amazing. Um, I, I quite like dim sum actually. Yeah, I quite like dim sum. Probably uh, Middle Eastern cuisine is my favorite. You know, this Lebanese style, um, North African, Moroccan f food, you know, Iranian, that kind of thing, Turkish, those, those types of cuisines. <clears throat> okay, question from Walther P99BG. Uh, name, uh, or he says, three popular designer and three popular niche fragrances that you can't stand. Wow. Um, in terms of the designer side, I would probably go with Thierry Mugler's Amen. The day I wore that, oh my god, I just, it's just terrible for me. It's too potent, it's too potent. Uh, Narciso Rodriguez uh, for him, I think it's called the one which is supposedly smells like wet concrete. Um, I don't want to smell like wet concrete. I mean, put it that way. I really did not like it. And also uh, one that I tried recently, probably from Paco Rabanne, is Invictus. It's very, it's very childish, very cheap. Um, the bottle is just terrible as well. So probably those three. Uh, and three from the niche side of things. Niche side of things, well, you say popular. I'm not sure how popular this is, but Oud Queer Darabi from Montal, way too potent, way too skanky, and just way too much. Uh, Leather Rood from Dior also comes to mind. Did not like that at all. And a fragrance that completely surprised me. I thought I was going to like this, but it's actually a fragrance that I did not like at all. From the House of Imaginary Authors, and that one is Mosaic. I really thought I was going to like that fragrance, but it's a scrubber, completely. So yeah, those are the fragrance fragrances, I would say. Question here from Brian Thornton. Um, hey Raj, enjoy your reviews, thanks. Uh, you mentioned in a recent video that you often sell your fragrances and buy others. So he said, what fragrance have you sold off only to go and buy it again? Well, normally when I sell a fragrance, I really don't have any regrets after selling it. Maybe one or two I would think about repurchasing. One of those is a recent repurchase and is from the house of Aqua de Palma. And that one is Colonia Intensa. And I just thought to myself, I have to have that fragrance back in my collection. What was I thinking selling that? Um, it is one of my all time favorites actually. So why I sold it, I don't know. It must've been, I must've been on something at the time. I don't know, but that's it. I don't really have many other regrets. And what are three fragrances you see having forever, regardless of price? Well, there's a few people who have asked a similar question. So um, three fragrances I could see myself having for life. Dior Homme Intense, um, maybe uh, Enigma Pour Homme, probably also Parfum de Mali's Herod, but 
there's so many I'm leaving out, but maybe the, those three, but I guess I could change my mind, you know, tomorrow. So a uh, question here from Beyonder1. Hello Raj, my questions are, what are the five fragrances that you would never want to separate yourself from? So a similar question. So yeah, the ones I mentioned, I would probably throw in like Tonkin Imperial from Guerlain. I would, uh, let's see, what else have I got here? Maybe Frappan's 1270 actually. Yeah, these are some of my all time favorites. So yeah, he said, what is the impact your passion of fragrances has created around you in your everyday life? Um, well, you know, when people know that I'm into fragrances, they definitely have like, they're kind of intrigued by what it's all about. And people ask me for recommendations. Uh, people often, you know, they want to know what I'm wearing. Um, the impact of your passion in your everyday life, that's probably about it. You know, I think fragrance can be, sometimes when I'm at work and I'm at my desk and I can smell the fragrance coming off my, my skin, I don't know why, but it kind of helps me to concentrate a little bit more. It kind of puts me in a zone, especially when it's a fragrance I really like. So yeah. And he says, what is the influence that scents have had in your psychology and in your vision of the world? Wow. Well, one thing it's definitely made me think of is be open-minded. And I do think I have always been op an open-minded person. But with fragrances, you know, there are so many brands, so many notes, accords that you think, you know what, that's for a certain type of person or that is only for a certain gender. But actually, as I got into fragrances, as I started smelling new things, it really opened up my eyes. You know, rose is a note that I thought I would never go anywhere near, but actually is one of my favorite notes. Um, when it's more on the, you know, when it's mixed in with other ingredients. But yeah, I mean, I think things like that, you know, going out, trying new things, and it's always told me, it's always sort of taught me to keep my options open, and variety is the spice of life. So yeah, probably that, that's what I would say. Okay, question from Francis from the YouTube channel Fragrance First. He says, if you can name three fragrances you uh, don't currently own, but you would love to, you know, what would they be and uh, why would you like to add them to your collection? Well, um, I always keep a little list on my base notes profile of basically like a to buy list, like a wish list. Fragrances on there at the moment, one from Dior, Feb Delicieux. I have reviewed that fragrance and that is just like, I love Gourmand fragrances, so it does it so well. A fragrance that came to my mind recently, which wasn't really sort of on my radar for a long time. I basically just blind bought the uh, decant from the house of Robert Piguet and this one is called Knightsbridge and this one really highlights uh, the tonka bean really really well very authentic and it's got this sweet creamy sandalwood with a sweet rose in there really interesting fragrance I like that a lot so that one um, what else was on my to buy list I think also Beolia from Penhaligans it's not like top of my list but if I saw a good deal on that, yeah, maybe I would like to have that in my collection. Also, uh, a fragrance I've been wearing recently from the house of Naomi Goodsir, created by Bertrand Duchafort, one of my favorite perfumers, is Or du Soray. Wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Full of um, fruity, uh, mildly spicy tobacco. Um, there's a booziness in there. There's a creaminess, uh, sweet, it's very addictive. Whoa, that was a really good fragrance. I need to wear that a little bit more before I have a kind of final opinion, but I'm pretty sure I love it. Okay, a question here from Nasser Alfahar. He says, what is your best brand for clothes and where do you uh, where do you shop usually? Um, best brand for clothes, as I said, you know, I love Ralph Lauren. Um, I also like some, in terms of high street brands, you know, I do like Uniqlo, I do like Gap. Um, there's one brand which is not really not really um, high street or designer, but it's in in the middle called Kos. I quite like Jaeger. Um, I quite like a brand called Charles Tirrett. They make traditional English shirts, but also have good shoes and good knitwear. Um, like Lacoste, I like Levi's for jeans. So yeah. And uh, what's your, a couple of people have asked me this question. What's your favorite movie? Well, that's a tough question because there's quite a few. There's quite a few out there which I really like, and I really liked Gladiator. I've watched that quite a few times. Gladiator is amazing. Russell Crowe did a great job in there. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix as well. 
Uh, the Green Mile is great. And also, a bit of a strange choice, some people might think. But I, I, I really like Home Alone. Home Alone 1 and then Lost in New York, the second one. Every time that comes on at Christmas, I always watch it. So, yeah, I love that film. I think I probably like Lost in New York the most. Uh, yeah. A uh, question here from AFC TID Guna Glory. Uh, he says, can Arsenal win the league and why? So, if you guys don't know by now, I'm a big Arsenal fan. Can we win the league? Yes, we can win the league. <laughs> But the thing is, I still have my doubts about Arsenal because we're a very inconsistent team. We have moments of brilliance and then moments where we just look so ordinary. So it's just finding that balance and we need some of our big players to be more consistent. We can do it. We can do it, especially Man United, Chelsea, Man City have dropped off a little bit. Um, this is really is, a lot of people say it, but this really is the best time that we can win the league. And I think if we do, we can really push on next season and maybe start targeting the Champions League, which I don't think we're anywhere near, you know, winning that. But yeah, we got a chance. We got a chance. Okay, question from Tom BZ23. Do you have Herod and Tobacco Vanille? Yeah, I do. I have both of them. They're two of my favorite fragrances. And I definitely think there are differences. And I think you can own both of them. But, you know, if you only wanted to own one tobacco and sort of a tobacco and sweet fragrance, maybe, I don't know, you'd have to make your decision. But I think you can own both. Okay. Um, Wise Hope asks, Thanks for your time. Uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work for a, an architecture practice. I've been here for a year and I'm a finance manager there. So, yeah, I've trained as a management accountant in previous uh, in jobs, that's what I've done, and I've done exams and studying at the same time. So yeah, that's a SEMA is the qualification. Uh, at what time do you? What what town do you live, and where was your town of birth? I was born and lived in London my whole life. And a few words about your family. Well, yeah, family is very important to me, and I think it's very important to try and stay in contact with as much as your family as you can. My dad's side is mainly the the biggest side in this country, anyway and we always try to get together we've got a big family and you know um, people have grown up and have kids and then those kids have had kids my dad's got you know four brothers and sisters and even my on my mum's side you know my mum's sister and her family we got on really well so yeah it's good to it's good to have a um, family in your life top three fragrances of all time i think i've, I've kind of mentioned something similar to that three most complicated complemented fragrances i think i've mentioned that also uh, he also says, if you had to choose one and one only fragrance between the following three, all from the house of Zerzhov, and they are Neo, Kobe, or I think it actually is pronounced Kobe, or uh, 1861 Renaissance, which one would it be? Well, I have Neo and I have 1861. And 1861 is amazing for... Uh, this is Renaissance, they've renamed it. And this is amazing for summertime. It's so fresh, uplifting, minty. But actually, I think I prefer Neo, actually. I don't know, I didn't think I would say that, but Neo, the more I wear it, the more I appreciate it. It's very versatile in terms of seasons, actually. And it has a little bit more, uh, not a little bit more, they both have depth, but Neo has this depth to it, which makes it possible to wear in slightly cooler, colder weather. Uh, Kobe is really good as well, a very huge blast of orange blossom, but quite linear and I didn't really feel you would get value for money in that one, but it is a great scent. Right, question here from, a question here from Rascot. He says, uh, if you could have just one fragrance for each season, what would they be? Hmm, that's a, that's a tough one. What would it be? One fragrance for, for one season. Um, I would probably say, since we're in winter right now, I think Parfum de Mali's Herod, I've probably, you know, probably mentioned that a few times. Going into spring, I think 1861 worked really well from Zerzhov. Creed's Vetiver Geranium, so I know you said one choice, but I've gone with two. Summertime, uh, Cedrite and Ivron from Atelier Cologne. <clears throat> Autumn, um, I don't know, I haven't mentioned Diorum Intense. I don't think I would be able to live without that in, in a whole year. So yeah, those are my choices. A question here from another reviewer, Max Forty. He says, have you and will you ever come to New York City? I would love to do a collab. 
I would love to do a collab and I would love to come to New York City. I think there's a lot of a lot of fragrance enthusiasts there, great shops, and generally the city just seems so cool. You know, you've got the theater, you've got the bars, the jazz clubs, you've got the all the sites. It's a very uh, important city in the world, very historic city. Um, it seems vibrant, buzzing, kind of like London. I would love to go to New York, really would. I just don't know when, like, planning it sometimes is a bit tricky, but yeah. A uh, favorite uh, fragrance house, one niche, one designer. In terms of the niche side, probably Guerlain, although, you know, they do also produce fragrances at the main sh for a mainstream uh, crowd, but technically they are a niche house, so I'd go with Guerlain. In terms, of, in terms of a designer house, Dior, I think a lot of people do say Dior, they just have a stellar lineup, most of their fragrances are very well made, very, very good. And if you're, you know, looking to get into some really classy, maybe something different, uh, go with Dior. And if you don't want to spend a huge, huge amounts of money, great brand to check out. Uh, he says here, up to this day, what is your favorite fragrance of all time? Um, you know, I think I mentioned this, probably, probably Dior Rom Intense, probably. Uh, and when did you start your fragrance journey and, and what or who was your biggest impact? Well, in terms of probably get probably getting into fragrances, probably I don't know, like five six years ago, five years maybe, and um, yeah, you know, I, I, what influenced me was fragrance reviewers. Uh, my dad's really into fragrances, so him. Also, I used to work near a place in London called Oxford Street, which is like a big all shops, you know, retail retail central. And there were many uh, department stores there and um, little boutique stores in and around the area. And probably going into those stores and trying things probably influenced me. So, yeah. Question here from uh, Lupe over at the Lupe Experience. Good to hear from you. He says here, why are you so awesome? I think uh, I was just born this way. It's just natural, to be honest. <laughs> and he says, um, you know, what is your favorite movie of all time? I have actually answered that one. And then he says, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? You know, I did think about this, and I think one superpower I would love to have, and it would come in so handy when I'm traveling to work and traveling back from work, so peak hours on the train. I wish I had the ability to gather up some, like, a force field in my hand and just like move people out the way just literally like you know just move a crowd out of my way and just create a path so I can just walk and get to work on time you know one day I got to there's a station in London very busy called King's Cross St Pancras International and it's a huge you've got trains going out to like Paris and Brussels and the north of England you know and also all the under London underground as well so very very busy and at peak time in the morning there was a guy just walking along the corridor and he just had his book he was like engrossed in his book and I was like hello peak hours you're not on the beach this is not a good time to be reading a book you're getting in people's ways so things like that actually you know I don't get annoyed too much I'm quite a calm person in life but when I see people just having a little chit chat if you're in London on the tube you need to walk with a bit of pace so <laughs> yeah that's kind of a little bit annoying a uh, question that just came in in time just before I shot this video from Akash Khan. He says, hey Raj, I uh, love to watch your videos. Thank you. He says, can you make us a video that shows how to decant a fragrance? What I would say is that that's something that I probably won't do simply because if you go into YouTube and type in how to decant fragrance, how to decant a cologne, there'll be loads of people showing you an ideal way of um, decanting a cologne. Sometimes the best way I find is to get your um, atomizer, hold it at an angle and just spray in like that. And then as you get to the top, you kind of spray in that way. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of advice I would offer. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna scroll through just to make sure I've covered everyone's questions. I don't know if I have missed out anyone. I don't think so. Um, just give me a second. Yeah, some really good questions in here, guys. Really, really pleased to, uh, really pleased to answer your questions. I hope you've got a little bit of insight into me, uh, my fragrance in interests, my life in general. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.